bell <laughs> rang. <laughs> the bell rang, yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Committee of the Whole meeting of Asuyas Town Council, Tuesday, May the 19th, 2015, at 9 a.m. in Council Chambers. Um, it, at 9 a.m., did I say that? Yes. Okay, so is there, are there any late items to be added to the agenda? No? Hearing none, could I have a, a motion, please, that, uh, that we accept the agenda? Thank you. That would be uh, Councillor Campbell, Councillor Rhodes. All in favor? Thank you. And we have a delegation here this morning. We actually have two of them, and I think we're going to have an, the other one put off for a, for a while. We'll adjust it when um, Richard Toperzer arrives, because I think he's driving from Vernon. So he may take him a while. Our first delegation this morning is the Okanagan Nation Alliance Inconeet Desert Cultural Center Partnership along with uh, Watermark Beach Resort. So we have Charlotte Stringham, who is the general manager of the Inconeet Desert Cultural Center, Richard Busanich, who is uh, Okanagan Nation Alliance, and Ingrid Jarrett from the um, Watermark Beach Resort. So they're going to talk to us about fish, I think. So. W welcome, and please, would you like to come up to the microphone and um, and talk to us, and then we um, we can ask you some questions after. Thank you. Okay, I just uh, I've never been with um, mayor and council in such a formal setting. It's usually at the cultural center, and we're usually uh, doing events with you. But I'm glad to be here today, and I want to present the Okanagan so uh, uh, sockeye fisheries. We uh, have brought the Okanagan Nations and uh, is consists of seven bands and also uh, uh, the Colville Confederate Tribes in uh, Washington State. We've been working on uh, bringing back the salmon since about 2003. And so um, we've been doing fishing for the last uh, few years. It can be Desert Cultural Center has been involved in that fishing program. We're finally getting it to a point where I can speak to you today on how we're doing it on the lake. Uh, last year we had a program that uh, we invited fishermen to come and they, were, uh, they received their fishing license and then they worked through the o uh, Okanagan Nations Alliance. And we had um, about 30 boats every day out on the water for a two week period and they brought in fish. And uh, the exchange, we did a fish exchange where they would bringing in 10 fish, they would get to take home two fish. And that was how they were gifted. Um, and that was how they were paid for the fishing. This year we're, we're expanding that program and we're opening it up to um, all fishers that would like to uh, go on the water. Uh, you would have to go through the Okanagan Nations Alliance and there is a form that is filled out that we um, give to the fishermen that will go out on the water and do the fishing. They will do fishing actually to help the Inkami Desert Cultural Center. We'll sell the fish and um, also we also sell it out in the marketplace through Codfathers and Codfathers he cuts the fish and he brings it then to the restaurants fresh. And um, I have Ingrid here too because we're working in partnership. We always believe at Osuyas Indian Band that partnership is better. And so that's why I'm coming to town council today because I want to talk about a partnership. And we have in partnership with us right now Spirit Ridge. And we have Ingrid at Watermark. And we hope that we can get other partners. We're working with Destination Osuyas as a partner. And uh, hopefully, as we all work together, we're going to be able to make this fishing program uh, work. In the fishing program, though, we're always very much aware of the protection of the fish. And so during the, what we will do this year is between August 1st through the 15th, uh, we will have the uh, commercial fishing out there going and also the wreck fishing. After the 15th, we can determine how many fish have come in and if we move on to continue on with that fishing. Otherwise, it will go just into sane fishing, which is for the nation itself. And the fish that they bring in from the sane fishing 
go to the Okanagan people, it goes to elders and families and um, women that uh, are widowed, and that goes through the seven bands uh, up here in Canada. In the United States, the fisheries is done through the state of Washington, and so we're not involved in returning fish to, to the Colville Confederate tribes. They take care of that themselves. Um, in this time, this time I would like, uh, last year we sold at Petrocan, and actually the, um, the Inkemi Desert Cultural Center was able to um, make $14,000 from the fishing. It's very hard. We're, um, we're uh, a society, and we don't make a profit at the Inkemi Desert Cultural Center. We have about 18,000 people that go through the Cultural Center every year. But even with that, I have a lot of expenses in paying staff. And running a big center like I do, there's a lot of things like I can have a camera that will go out that costs me $30,000. And so then I'm go I, I so I don't make a profit there. So it's very appreciative that I can go to the Okanagan Nations Alliance and be able to sell the fish and then be able to, um, then at the center we teach about the fishing program. And we have a um, movie at the pit house uh, and it talks about what we've been doing as a nation. And so people are able to come in and we're able to um, use that as part of our tourism uh, part. Uh, at the Cultural Center. We have other things at the Cultural Center, of course, but fishing is a very important part. I wanted to, uh, so I want to let you know that we would like to start a fish market on this side of the lake. I've talked to Ingrid and um, she, and but we want to rent it, we want to rent the business not on Ingrid's property, but just across from there, because the Okanagan Nations would like to bring in a, a log and they want to build a canoe over the summer and they want to come in on Fridays and they want to be carving the canoe. And then on Fridays they will also bring in a person from the Okanagan Nation that will run the market. And so we want to set up a little market where we can sell the hoochies and that's what you catch the fish with are these hoochies. And then um, we also want to sell some t-shirts and caps from the Inkemi Desert Cultural Center. And we would like to work the market at the Inkemi Desert Cultural Center Mondays through Thursday or Mondays through Friday, depending on how the Okanagan Nation wants to work in partnership with us. And so we're planning just the five days a week to be able to sell the fish and to do some marketing there and to tell the story. So we will have an interpreter at that uh, business site and they will tell stories. We're also going to have a boat and I've worked it out with Ingrid that we can take people on tours and I have a pontoon boat. It will take six people out, of the top, out at a time with one interpreter and then of course the, the person that drives the boat. And so um, that's kind of the whole gist of it. I want to turn my time over to um, Richard Basanich to talk about the biology part and a little bit of the history. And then after that, I want Ingrid Jarrett to talk a little bit about um, the 100 mile slow cookery um, Canada. Uh, we're part of a slow cookery group and, and we have many farmers that you know, do the vegetables and the things, and we want to do the salmon and be able to serve that to restaurants and, and to be able to um, meet the needs of a 100-mile radius. And uh, so we're part of that. We've received awards. Ottawa recognizes us for our fishing, and we also are branded, uh, and, and Richard will tell you a little bit about that branding. And so uh, I'm going to just stop for now. I'm going to let them finish their presentation, and then you can ask questions of any three of us during the time that, um, that we have left. Thank you. Richard. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, very honored to be here today. I have uh, <clears throat> some branded materials, and I'll keep my message really short. Uh, really, um, the... the you're going to see, I'll just pass this to the mayor, um, a little blurb on the fish itself, the story of the fish. 
the fisheries, a selective fisheries, something that's actually uh, um, been honored by not only the Okanagan here, but has been approved and recognized off the charts uh, from any like David Suzuki Foundation, OceanWise, this, all the eco certification programs that currently exist globally, we supersede all of those with the fisheries that we've developed. And lastly, uh, an Okanagan way, how, what is your way? How do you want to do business? And so I'll just um, pass these forward and feel free to keep a copy or share it. Thank you. Boots, but that is my brand. I am a gumboot biologist. I've been before <laughs> council before, and, and I am proud of it. Um, farmer and fisher, historically, uh, my family emigrated from Italy. I'm first generation Canadian, and I'm very pleased to be in the Okanagan. Um, so yeah, the three things that, the three key messages that I'd like to share: the fisheries. This was a this is a stock in full recovery, and in my in my 18 years career from Sacramento, Mill Creek, California to the Aleutian Islands, I've never been a part of a story of rebound and recovery and revitalization like what's going on here. And for those of you that don't know what's going on, in the mid 90s, uh, well, let, let me go back two, three, four hundred years. Historically, there was probably about one to six million fish, salmon, going through this area up, up all the way into the Okanagan Lakes. And so over the, in about in the mid 90s, there was a complete crash from a variety of sources. And we saw all stocks except sockeye pretty much decimated to the point where there was now a call to actually come to action. And since the mid 90s from all species being rendered threatened and endangered with the exception of sockeye to about 5,000 fish in the only natural section in the Columbia Basin uh, proximate to Oliver, which actually we've done an economic study shows pr provides about six million dollars annually in terms of ecosystem values to the region. We've complemented that by recovery of the salmon through, you know, our elders and, and teachers will tell you it's through prayers, through science, through finding partnerships with the different agencies, coming before the regional groups such as yourself to, <coughs> to try and create those partnerships. And so today the vision is we sit, we're seeing the fishery recover or the Okanagan are finding a way to share that, the common bowl approach, where we'd like to see all people share in that wealth. And this fishery, when you when it goes on in the Soyuz for that one month, it brings in, over the last three to five years, it's averaged about 350 to half a million dollars just to the town of the Soyuz. And we'd like to see that multiplied in Skaha Lake and so forth and shared. And so this fishery, the salmon that it provides for us, um, this is an excellent opportunity um, where Ottawa's eyes are on us. And th what Charlotte shared with you today is <laughs> this summer. But I'd like to share a vision of the future where, where with Ingrid's um, story where she's going to share eyes in Europe and America are looking at this fishery as a, as a model uh, for the future. We, we're coming to you today, hopefully, to seek you know full collaboration from this council and partnership as we move this fishery forward. We don't know what this fishery's vision is going to be, and so through the Soyuz Indian Band and other business associates like Ingrid, the media, and such as yourself and other business associates, we'd like to see this um, expanded and provide a lot more infrastructure, marinas, and other other development opportunities local here that can be shared and and create a legacy project for the future whatever that is and so uh, yeah I just uh, I'm looking forward to your questions or comments and I think I'll just keep it brief at that today we're here about a stall or a position in the town of Asoyes to share the presence and get the story out but really, in the next 5, 10, 15 years, um, this fishery could be multiplied and expanded and, you know, dream. So I'd like to hand it over to Ingrid. Thank you, Richard. Um, there's three points that I'd like to make this morning. One, um, I'll speak as general manager and VP business developer for Watermark Beach Resort. Um, at this point, what we've been able to do is through chef and through procurement and through stories, 
have been able to support this fisheries on uh, several fronts. I'm wholly uh, supportive of us being able to have a presence that is um, indigenously relevant to profile the story of this fish and also the story that precurses it, which is the indigenous people that have lived here. We find that our resort, of course, in the summer is uh, almost full, and that our community gathers in that area on the lake. And for there to be a presence where people can be telling stories, buying fish, and potentially cans of salmon or the other uh, not just fresh, would actually enable uh, daily interaction and an understanding of what this fishery is. At this point, um, we have people outside of the valley that are more uh, well-versed in the story of what this is and more interested in than our own community. And I think there provides a real opportunity. So um, th that, that is one thing, to be able to have not only the storytelling, the market opportunity, but also carving a canoe which would give a really neat relevancy and tie in the First Nations both sides of the lake, which is, I think, important. Uh, we currently feature this salmon uh, constantly on our menu. We were just in Vancouver on global television with our chef where they featured the story of the salmon and they did a tasting in the morning news. It went over very, very well. Um, I'd like to be able to sell the salmon as a product in addition to my chef's dressings and everything else that we're doing. Um, I am also on the board of the Thompson Okanagan Tourism Association um, and have worked very hard to develop a long-term 10-year strategy. One of the themes of TOTA is local flavors. This salmon is so, so, is so important to that regional strategy and the tying together of these seven First Nations in the Similkameen Valley as well as the Okanagan Valley that they actually are featuring and wholly supporting us telling the story outside of our region. Uh, one of the ways that they were doing that is Pauline Turbasket, who is the executive director of the ONA, and myself just went to Montreal. We both co-presented, along with fisheries biologists, this Okanagan sockeye story to the national meeting in Montreal. There we also had representatives from Italy and the U.S. <coughs> and uh, last year, Pauline and I both traveled to Italy and actually featured not only the indigenous relevancy of this in the world of indigenous food systems, but also the ability to regenerate a small-scale fishery. This fishery is being profiled internationally under the UN as an example of partnership regeneration fisheries. I was just on a call three days ago with uh, Slowfish Americas, U uh, South America, Central America, and North America, and we are the signature <coughs> story that they're using as an example of what can be done. Um, we will be again featured in New Orleans. Uh, we will be at Indigenous Terra Madre, which is in Italy in October, and, uh, and another youth forum in Korea. All this story is the main story going around the world. Um, I am hosting two media fams, one at the end of uh, May and one in June. Both of them are wholly funded by Watermark. And we will be bringing media in from all across the US and then all Canadian media. And we're able to feature as part of the itinerary uh, Charlotte's pontoon boat going out with the fisheries, telling the stories. This is the reason that they've agreed to come. They could go anywhere. These media people are asked and people come up with really fancy, exciting things for them to do. They've all specifically chosen to come here. And this is the feature story they're looking at. I would also just like to say that because this is a cross-border initiative, we have another significant opportunity. These fish do not uh, adhere to political boundaries. So they've never known the difference between Canada and the US. There is no other story within an environmental ecosystem that is so wholly supported by two separate nations. So we, we not only have our partners in the US, working with us from a tourism perspective, from an economic development perspective, but also from an environmental perspective, where I'm working 
with them, with the Okanagan Nation Alliance, as we regenerate this fishery, and it becomes sort of a story from the mouth of the river up to where they come to live before they go to spawn. So I just, uh, by telling you that, my, my hope is that you understand and have uh, an opportunity to embrace what the opportunity might become for a Suyus as a resort municipality in a desert in a very fragile ecosystem with some really incredible leading edge uh, indigenous people that have been able to create this incredible story and its relevancy. Um, I think I've probably said enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you to all three of you, and while you were all talking, the first thing I thought of was that um, that in uh, October of this year, uh, Osuyas is hosting the third uh, Lake Water Science Forum, and I know Richard is part of that, and obviously the rest of you as well. And I think that it probably touches on a lot of the issues that you've just talked to now. This is cross-border, International Joint Commission, people from uh, Washington, people from BC, and all forms of government are going to be coming to Osuyas for uh, three days. As a matter of fact, we're having our um, our opening reception at uh, at Spirit at, not Spirit Ridge at the Okanagan or the the Inconique Desert Cultural Center, and we're doing the rest of it over at um, at Sonora. So I really think that a lot of these topics will um, will come forward, and they we're just putting together a program right now of who would be speaking and who would be interested. And um, I think this would be a good, a good topic. Um, working together and education has to be a positive, absolutely. And um, I think that your ideas are terrific. Um, uh, now what we need to do is just try and figure out the logistics of making some of them, uh, some of them work. So thank you very much to all of you, and I'm going to turn this over to, uh, to Council, Councillor Campbell. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. Taking full appreciation of, of the time constraints uh, you have today, um, I, I attended the, uh, the seminar at uh, the, at the uh, at Spirit Ridge several weeks ago. And I think the story itself is fascinating, but it's much more complex um, than what you were able to, to speak to us with today. Um, is there a possibility that that presentation can be sent uh, to town, to be uh, sent out to, to mayor and council, the presentation that we did that day? Because I think that there's just so much uh, from the history um, to the science of it, to the future of it. I think there, there's a lot uh, to be told there. So I think if we could do that, that would be great. Good idea, thank you. Uh, Councillor Rhodes. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, Charlotte, nice to see you again. Uh, uh, congratulations on the Cultural Centre. I, I took some family up there last uh, summer and it was just the highlight of their whole visit here. Um, uh, Richard, uh, I think you've been here three or four times and uh, uh, I know at one point there was a lot of doom and gloom about the salmon, the whole dynamic of it, but certainly a lot more positive news uh, uh, now. And Ingrid, uh, your relentless pursuit of tourism and interacting with our community is just it, its so good and thank you so much for that. I have a question for Richard. Uh, I know things are getting better and they're way better than they have been for a long time. Is there anything specifically we could do as a municipality to make things better regarding the salmon and how they, you know, interact with the people that use our lake and that kind of thing? I, I know during some of those peak times there's so much uh, activity on the lake that it kind of disrupts that flow of salmon through and that kind of thing. But I'd be really interested to know, I hate to put you on the spot, if there's anything we could do or promote or work towards that could make uh, those situations better yeah, I think uh, well you mentioned the forum hosting the forum is that education and communication piece is key and so uh, my first forethought from all the meetings that I've been engaged in is probably communication and education so on the waterfront in the region and beyond just getting that messaging out it's surprising to always hear how many people don't even know that there's salmon in the desert. So, uh, and then 
helping us develop the messaging for best practices for that lake. This is a very unique fishery, a warm water fishery that um, it, there's an experiment going on. And so if we can work together to recruit fishers, educate just the general public on what's going on in the lake and how to treat the lake and the fish and so forth. So uh, Kia, uh, just yeah, working through uh, with, with your guys' leadership on communication packages and, and message boards out there. And hopefully if we're out there, um, feel f the other thing that would be really cool, an open invitation is I'd like to invite all of you out on a tour of the lake this year when we were out fishing. We have a boat that can seat, that can harbor every, everyone here. So there's an open invitation to actually experience it because it's quite a different perspective when you're there shoulder to shoulder. So that could be a part of the story. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I just say that the, the forum that we're having in the fall, it has been agreed and I'm going to go and talk to the high schools plus in Orville, the high school and invite perhaps some of the science classes or uh, which is really key, isn't it, to education yeah. and, and getting them kind of involved in an early stage. That, that would be awesome and yeah. we're very much about youth but the, I guess the last plug is we have this almost like a community support agriculture system for this new fisheries that's developing. Our lowest participation rates are actually right here in a Soyuz and I heard Ingrid mention a, just a one-liner so we have uh, the Soyuz Fish and Game and other local clubs that are getting actively engaged and so any assistance there too to get that message out and uh, recruitment that would be great. Good. Um, Charlotte, sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Not only do we have the forum but we have, uh, we have two ceremonies that we do at the Cultural Centre and it would be very nice if you would come to those ceremonies the first ceremony will be the second weekend of August and I'll send the dates. Mm -hmm. I tried to get a person at the Cultural Centre to get the exact date but I couldn't get in today. Uh, and then at the end of August, then we, ha and at that one we give away hoochies. That's going to be our gift to the fishermen. Mm -hmm. So they will be coming and so you'll get an introduction to some of the f people that will be fishing on the water. And that at, at the end of the season we also have a ceremony because we always have a ceremony to thank the fish for coming and then we have a ceremony for thanking them for providing for the community around us. And at that ceremony we honor the fish and usually Chief Clarence Louie will come and he'll talk at that one but I probably will have him come at both. And so let me get the information to you on those and we invite all of you to come because it's a, it's a, it's a feast and it's, we call it, we can't call it the salmon feast because we have a salmon feast within our nation and our elders get confused on that and then they get angry with me. <laughs> so we're going to call it a salmon bake and so it'll be during the month of August. Thank you very much. Councillor King. Uh, thank you, Mayor McCorda. First of all, I'd really like to thank the Okanagan Nation for bringing the salmon back to our area because the story you're telling is world-renowned and it brings more people to us. So I, I think I really want to go back and address a couple of questions you were requesting. I know we have a policy around vendors and I'm sure you fit their criteria. I don't know if that location is specific or not would be one question. And then the space you need for cutting out the canoe, which again I think is a great initiative. I was involved in a canoe cut out uh, in a previous lifetime and it does bring again more international exposure. It would be just the logistics because of the prime space down there and knowing the approximate size of the space you would need and putting fencing and up and everything for the safety of the canoe in the end, really trying to identify the location and I mean you kind of mentioned somewhere near Watermark but it's prime real estate. But if we can come up to logistics, I would support it full heartedly to have a canoe cutting there for sure. And thanks again. I, I believe that they will be working with Mr. Cunningham and, uh, and, uh, and looking at, at how to, to best uh, handle that. Um, can I just, did you have a question? Go ahead. No, not a oh. question. I just wanted to thank you all three for, for uh, sharing all your information it's really interesting my family actually are coming down from Smithers to participate in the fishing <clears throat> on the 6th of August <laughs> <laughs> good so I think education and communication knowledge being we were raised in the north where we're just uh, fish is such a valuable part of our existence and what you're doing is wonderful I just had a thought when you were talking that one of the concerns that we have 
um, that you've heard in the news is the zebra and quagga mussels, which you know has been um, has been talked about at the Okanagan Basin Water Board, definitely, and the the provincial government is is on it. Whether they're on it in a big way is debatable, because um, all it takes is um, somebody getting through with some of these mussels in their boat. <laughs> Does that, I mean, that's got to affect the number of fish that come through, I would think, and so we need to protect the lake in order to allow these fish to come through. Am I correct? Yeah, and, and do you know of anything more that's being done? I know that they're looking at border crossings and trying to set up guards and, and, and a, a stations where they can do this, but I'm wondering if it's too little too late, and I hope not. Do you have anything to say, uh, add to that, Richard? <coughs> yeah. My professional opinion is, uh, unfortunately, if you look at the Great Lakes and other models mm -hmm. like uh, Lake Tahoe and so forth, it's not a question. Of, it's a question. It's not a question of if, but when. Yeah. And it's going to be a game changer, but it's uh, the the fish structure and it, the, the food web's going to see a drastic change. I think salmon are very resilient. This, this fish is a very unique stock, and so um, I put my money on the soy sockeye for sure, and Good. Um, finding a way to be uh, robust and work within that, but abundances could change, and uh, that's just a fact. But the, the my last comment is the fisheries that we're developing is a very much artisanal fleet. It's meant to be a destination fisheries, and less is more, so it would never be the flavor and the structure of this fisheries here in the Soyuz and hopefully in Skaha Lake and beyond. Our artisanal fleets very much integrated into the local economy, sharing the story, less is more, and uh, appreciate almost like the tuna market when you get a sliver of sashimi, mm -hmm. like appreciating that spoonful of fish. So mm -hmm. if, if the world change around us, this fisheries is very much meant to adapt to that. Just just as the way the Okanagan have adapted over 10,000 years to what the environment's provided them. Good, thank you very much, that, uh, that's helpful. Is there anyone else that has anything to say? Well, thank you very, very much for your, this information. Please work with our staff and to try and get uh, something um, set up down at, uh, um, at Watermark and, um, and, and good luck with this. I think you guys have got lots of energy and lots of good ideas and let's work together for sure. So thank you very much. So I think what we will do, um, if this is all right, is skip over Mr. Topreser, who will not be here until 10.30, and could we go to the um, departmental business plan? Would that make sense? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So is Mr. Romanko, are you? Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. Uh, the business plan identifies the administration report to council on their project advancement three times a year. In the business planning uh, session, the council strategic priorities chart was completed with Gordon McIntosh. Council administration agreed to make this a living working planning document. The process for maintaining the, the chart as a living document includes uh, administration's commitment to completing uh, these activities. Uh, two, Council's commitment to these projects as priority activities. Three, reporting on progress to complete project and, and highlighting factors affecting the progress. And four, continuing to identify Council project priorities when projects are completed. The attached reports from the CAO and directors provides a highlight review of the priority projects identified and approved by Council in the business planning process. The CAO and the directors will address these projects and answer qu uh, Council's questions. Work in the last four months has resulted in some projects being completed. The attached uh, Council strategic priorities chart illustrates that additional uh, priority projects need to be identified by Council. The intended process is as follows. Uh, one, the CAO and the directors will provide an overview of the project uh, achievements, that's today. Two, the directors will identify new priorities for the chart and council discussions at the June 1st Committee of the Whole meeting. 
and three council identifies priority activities to fill the council priority section and that's next sections at the June 1st uh, committee of the whole meeting so uh, after this report you'll notice the uh, uh, the package includes a council strategic priorities chart uh, this chart was uh, developed in our business planning session uh, it's highlighted in red uh, the, the projects that have been completed and uh, uh, also the we'll be looking at uh, uh, updating on the other activities the second chart uh, kind of gives uh, uh, a quick picture look to see where the blanks are the where uh, where the work is to try and move projects up on, co on council's uh, priority list uh, you were given today uh, can question? I can I speak to that chart <laughs> now yeah. you have nothing in there about what uh, council advocacy and I think we've done our homework well then council <laughs> should have developed a report <laughs> <laughs> we can make or cou for council can provide a verbal report then on what you've done for advocacy can, can we do it now <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's council's meeting so when, if, okay. if you want to proceed on the advocacy aspect of it Please well, do. When, when I looked at it, and, and I looked at the ones that were in red and completed, and there were three things that Council um, was supposed to advocate for. One was um, OBWB, and I think we have done that. I have now been, I'm a director on OBWB, so I'm there and I'm bringing forward um, issues. Plus, the Lake Water Science Forum is uh, is OBWB sort of, uh, you know, they're, they're doing, they're pushing that and getting it organized. So I want a tick mark there. <laughs> the next one is the Millfoil OBWB, and we were asked to um, to look at that. Um, I, I asked um, James Litley to come down. He was here the meeting I wasn't, that, uh, that Councillor King was, um, was in the chair. And I think he gave a pretty good report, plus it was written up in the paper. So we want a check mark there. <laughs> okay. And the third is the MLA, and I think I was supposed to, um, to have a discussion with Linda Larson, which I did, and it was on, um, was on the resort municipality funding. And we and working through that, I know that we're having a meeting soon, but that has been put forward a couple of years. So we want a gold star. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you. Council wants a gold star. Gold star it is. Well, I mean, it, we should have had it in there. Okay, yeah. go. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, go. <laughs> I didn't mean that, Barry. Sorry. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, starting, uh, you were handed my report. Actually, I, I lost it, and got all the paperwork associated with this project. Somehow, it didn't uh, get lost. Got lost in the project. But I'd like to start with uh, the activities that were my my charges uh, uh, in in terms of what uh, what their status is. Certainly, looking at in the area of the council priorities, the airport lands repurposing. Uh, the provincial government is currently in in, in First Nations in it and interdepartmental consultations. The environmental assessment is being completed and will be reviewed by the provincial government uh, and the director of planning is currently having discussions with the ALC over the ALR designation of the area and the next steps. In terms of the small communities grant application, this was com uh, committed, uh, uh, completed and submitted and we're waiting for the results. That was for the, uh, the sewer lift station. Uh, the, wa uh, the water meter strategy uh, uh, request for proposal was uh, completed. Uh, Urban Systems has been, been selected to, to implement the study. We had our first meeting in, uh, in April and I just as an update, uh, the Urban Systems says that they will be bringing a draft report to Council to their July 6th meeting. So uh, that's the, the latest on that particular area. In terms of the uh, the next priorities uh, in the strategic chart, the QP contract negotiations, these were completed and we're just waiting for the final uh, contract to be uh, typed up. The water twinning application was completed and, and submitted uh, and again uh, the uh, we're waiting for the results of that particular grant application. Uh, water treatment plant application uh, we received council direction that this uh, would not be submitted as one of our, our priority projects. 
that in fact it would be the focus would be on the uh, sewer lift station and the water twinning. In terms of organic program information, uh, the, uh, the presentation on RDOS activities in this area was, uh, was given to council by uh, uh, a member of the regional district staff. In terms of some other uh, uh, CAO priorities uh, uh, that are uh, in, in, the, in the mill right now, the landfill operations contract, I've, uh, uh, which comes, the landfill operator contract, comes to an end at the end of uh, this year, and I've passed that responsibility on to the, the, the uh, Director of Finance. Uh, asset management grant, uh, that was, was a $10,000 grant application <coughs> for the, uh, to assist with doing an asset management plan, was completed, submitted, and mm -hmm. recently announced that we were successful in receiving a $10,000 grant. The uh, Resort Municipality Plan Redevelopment, uh, the planning session uh, is being organized right now, uh, being facilitated by Gord McIntosh, and that's to incur, occur uh, June 8th. Uh, the, all the invited groups, uh, are, I'm in the RSV process right now, and I'm getting a very good response from, from everybody. Some other uh, activities, uh, director performance appraisals were completed. Uh, the recruitment and hiring of a new operations director uh, with the re uh, imminent retirement of, uh, of Ron Doucette. Uh, this is in the process right now and the advertising has just been, has just started. Uh, the planning staff uh, have been helping uh, the director of planning with uh, the, the development of that new position and uh, no work has been done on boundary expansion, uh, expansion strategic direction. Uh, some other uh, activities that have been uh, filling my time uh, over the last uh, four months, uh, certainly continued work on the fire hall development, and that will be uh, provided information provided by the Director of Planning. Council orientation, uh, I think we did a lot of work together to try and bring the new council uh, information to assist them in their, their background, and although there's, it's a constant learning process, I think uh, we've, uh, we've done a, a pretty good job in that area. The uh, Destination of Series Partnership Agreement, this will be a priority in the next uh, two months. Uh, that agreement comes to an end at the end of December 31st. That's our partnership agreement with the Regional District and the Inconeep uh, Resort uh, um, Group. Uh, currently working on a new CAO job description and delegation of authority bylaws. So those are some of the activities and status of some of the projects that I've been working on. Uh, just a quick report uh, on uh, what is another area that is associated with administration, that's our communications section, which is uh, done by Donna Core and some of the projects that she's been involved in. Uh, the first one, Facebook, I know there's been a lot of discussion about why does the town not have an official Facebook uh, page, and a big part of that is uh, the, the amount of staff time that's required to uh, to maintain and respond to uh, comments made on Facebook. Uh, just to let council know, we do have a Facebook page, but it is hidden. Uh, <laughs> when, and it's our intention to use it as an emergency situation uh, in case there is a, a type of emergency in the town, then we can, our Facebook page would be, would be a major, we recognize it as an important tool in communication. Uh, however, we just don't have the staffing to, to continually monitor that particular uh, uh, tool. We've been working on um, a city reporter system, a software system, uh, trying to uh, help with our risk management. Uh, this is where we have uh, all our uh, 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 risk management uh, uh, assessments would be done on, uh, with our iPads and loaded straight into the uh, uh, in, into our into our system, we'll also be using it uh, for uh, our building permits. Uh, uh, for example, uh, our building inspector can go out and do all his uh, his reporting right on his iPad, and it goes straight into our system. There's no need for any type of report writing, so it, it increases our our efficiency. Uh, update on park uh, signs: uh, We're in the process of of, of rebranding all our signs uh, at all our parks. Uh, a, a consistent look, a uh, consistent message, and uh, uh, we've uh, just uh, gone through the process of uh, coming up with the, the final plans and uh, their uh, 
Uh, there'll be a little while to get them all done, but uh, it, they, we're just in a process of uh, preparing to do a contract on that. And then all our forms as well, uh, moving to an updated uh, internal uh, uh, standardization process. So some other priorities. Uh, Donna has been uh, reviewing our advertising costs and trying to uh, take a look at how we can uh, save some money. We, we, are, we do do significant amount of advertising and uh, uh, we want to take a look at how we can cut our costs in that particular area. And then in terms of an IT uh, uh, budget, uh, <coughs> been addressing uh, items with council on an ongoing basis. So that's the work that's been done by, our, um, and by Donna in our communication section, which is just a part <coughs> of her job. So with that. Can I just say yeah. that we just had um, somebody um, send us an email quite recently, I think it was last week, complimenting us on our, uh, on our website. Um, somebody from out of town, I believe, and I think that was really a nice, a nice uh, plus, isn't it, to know that we're yeah. doing a good yeah. job. So mm -hmm. thanks yeah. to everybody, and I know Donna's done a lot of it. Yes, it's uh, we have a we have a website committee. Every every department uh, has got a, a website person that works, and it's it's our uh, uh, you know one of our priorities is to to keep it a a, a living working. Uh, element and I know there's the battle between Facebook and websites and and but we we really do use our website as our key information tool so with that uh, if their council has any questions of my activities or what's happening in the communication end uh, if not then I'll I'll pass it over to uh, our director of finance can I just say that yes. it, it's always amazing to look at all of the things when you when you write them down and all of the things that you've done and that you're working on. So thank mm -hmm. you very much. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so getting on to the finance um, priorities, operational strategies that I, I, I had. We had the landfill tipping fees, which in new bylaw was adopted by council on March 16th, adjusting the rates. Uh, we had the fees and charges bylaw. A number of fees and charges bylaws were updated so far for 2015. We had our cemetery um, bylaw, which was adjusted by CPI in February. Our water, our water district, our sewer user fee bylaws adopted by council on March 16th. We had the museum parcel tax and tax rates adopted by council on May 4th. We have our recreation fees and charges bylaw, which will be adjusted by CPI on June 1st. And our cemetery fees and charges bylaw, this bylaw will also be reviewed and the rates compared between other municipalities in August and the uh, report being brought forward for council at that time. We've got our fire hall interim financing, uh, got a spreadsheet set up and compiling the costs, um, applied for and received the certificate of approval for our loan authorization bylaw 1306, which allows us to borrow the money. We've got IT capital upgrades, workstations, laptop and office 2013 was ordered as per our IT capital plan. The hardware and software are currently being installed by Tom from Northern Computers, which is our IT person. Under cemetery records, um, I have discussion with our finance staff to determine the timing of moving our manual system into our Batom system. Under other activities, we have installed Batom Explorer. Uh, this software was installed and the program's being utilized by finance staff. Um, expand Batom Open for utilities and business licenses. This is an online tool for, for people to see what's outstanding on, on their, their application or on their accounts. And Batum has been contacted to dis discuss the timing of this installation and this is scheduled to be up and running by December. Uh, a new item that was added was the landfill final cover and post closure reserve fund. I'm currently compiling information to bring forward a report um, to add for to our 2016 budget deliberations with respect to establishing a reserve fund um, for the landfill final cover and post closure costs. Uh, we're looking at, a, uh, for the last annual report, we're looking at about an 18-year lifespan left of the our sanitary landfill, so mm -hmm. it's time to start ensuring that we've got those post-closure costs in place. Mm -hmm. um, and then like, likewise, um, the one that's been passed from Barry to myself for the landfill contract RFP, um, we bring forward something for council mm -hmm. in the very near future. Good. Thank you. Any questions? Looks like it's working like clockwork. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Yeah, I'll ask a question. Oh. That software King. program, Jim, is that common between either municipalities or is that a special software for this town specific? The software is um, is conducive to about them. So any of the uh, <coughs> municipalities that are using oh, good. The, the, the data accounting software would be utilized. Okay, thank you. Okay, next is Ms. Van Viana. <laughs> thank you. So under the Council Priorities for Corporate Services, collective bargaining has been completed. We're just awaiting the final contract from the union for signing. The bylaw and washroom contract, review of the washroom contract and preliminary, fig pre preliminary figures are completed and under review. The bylaw contract review is in progress. The property insurance RFP, we are gathering information at this time. The RFP will be ready to send out in August. Animal control bylaw, preliminary research has been, done, has been done. Due to complexity and time constraints, this project will need to be pushed to fall. It's set for July right now in the priorities chart. We want to move it to fall. Uh, municipal ticketing review, preliminary review has been done. Further research is required. And HR filing, archiving, this project has not commenced, but the target date remains December. Under the corporate services priorities, uh, policy governance, new existing is ongoing as time permits. Uh, human resources policies ongoing as time permits. Landfill land acquisition awaiting a study to be completed by EBB Environmental. Web casting upgrades, new encoder and camera have been ordered. That's going to help to improve the quality of our council meetings being webcasted at this meeting and at our regular meetings. A new high definition capability should improve the image quality and estimated date is June. Records management, the archiving and purging of HR files um, and moving to all our files to the Arts Building has been, uh, from the Arts Building to the DO Building has been completed. Under other priority activities, under transit, this has taken quite a bit of time in our department. Um, the current transit bus has been consistently breaking down, leaving no transit service avail available between Osseus and Penticton. A new bus has been ordered, an estimated arrival is May 22nd, however each time the bus is decommissioned from service it is a lengthy process to get a backup bus. SOTS advised that since May 2014 the SOTS bus has been out of service 16 times and there have been six different backup buses used by SOTS during that time. A contingency bus scenario will be discussed at the Transit Committee governance meetings and will be arranged through the RDOS and uh, the director continues to sit as the Transit Future Plan focus group. Uh, postings for HR shortlisting and interviews have been carried out for the following, temporary accounting clerk for medical leave, temporary full-time planning and development services secretary, community services assistant, relief building service worker, student positions for both public works and community services, relief clerical staff, and community services program service supervisor for a one-year term. Municipal facilities janitorial contract, this was unexpected. We were given notice by the current janitorial, the janitor that they would end their contract at the end of June. A new RFP was prepared and advertising with a closing date of May 19th, so today. Under emergency management, tabletop exercise is being organized for October 23rd this year in Osseus. Various workshops and courses have been attended and emergency support services used and that was for that oleander fire. Bylaw enforcement, ongoing enforcement on unsightly properties and property encroachments. Um, we met with the RCMP and bylaw contractor to discuss summer enforcement issues with squatters on Crown land. They continue. Um, staff have been in contact with the provincial compliance and enforcement officers to discuss this. Um, time off manager. The time off manager program was implemented as a more efficient way to request and track time off for employees and track when relief staff are working and where. This was rolled out to town hall and development services at the beginning of 2015 and will be expanded to community services and public works in May and June. The annual report was compiled and was completed and was available as of Friday. So that is at the front counter or on our website. And boat trailer parking permits have been ordered and distributed to hotels, motels for the 2015 season. Thank you very much. Any questions? Keeping you busy. Lots of work there. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Um, and next would be uh, Mr. Cunningham, please. Planning and development. Okay. Uh, one of uh, Council's important uh, planning development priorities was the uh, Richter property development. 
And I have to re, uh, report that no serious responses have been received for the private sector to our invitations uh, for expressions of interest to purchase and develop the property with housing, including some affordable units. Uh, a report will be taken to Council on uh, June 1st, requesting Council consideration that the Town act as its own developer and sell individual lots to builders on a phased basis. Uh, next, Council priorities, uh, downtown Main Street development. Uh, the administration will take uh, the lead from discussions on this at the Resort Municipality Strategy Workshop on June 8th, both, re both with respect to direction and timing. Uh, director priorities, the uh, Gyro Park Plaza, Stage A, uh, for the main part of the plaza is almost complete, and the eastern extension of st Stage B has been redesigned to avoid the uh, volleyball courts and will go out to tender by September for completion this year. Uh, parks and Trails Plan, the RFP has been issued with the closing date of June 5th. Fire Hall Tender and Construction, work is near completion on construction drawings and final cost estimates ready for tendering in August with construction comp uh, completion schedule for August next year. OCP Modernization, uh, public process for moder modernizing the OCP on sustainability principles will be postponed till later this year because of competing work priorities, departmental staffing, job description and advertisement completed for the senior planner. And hopefully uh, with uh, Council's uh, agreement uh, this afternoon that can proceed this week. Uh, other activities, Affordable Housing Authority, work on terms of references to be picked up again, ready for uh, recruiting uh, citizen uh, volunteers. 8,000 Cottonwood Drive, developers' uh, commitment is uncertain, but legal research is, uh, is continuing to free up the Indigo Pier securities. Other priority uh, activities, Jared Park Pier, uh, water for the Waterfront Steering Committee has had its first meeting. Uh, with CTQ consultants for startup on the project advancement study. DCC bylaw update, True have provided uh, a draft for review. Airport industrial repurposing, this is contingent on uh, Council's direction, but could include an ALR application and OCP zoning approvals, and uh, possibly DPs later. Uh, directional wayfinding signage, priority for the senior planner in 215. <coughs> Kruger Mountain Municipal Expansion, priority for director in 216, and zoning bylaw update, very much needed, but should logically wait until the OCP modernization is complete. And then, of course, we have our usual ongoing activities uh, with respect to um, many inquiries for, for development, uh, applications for, for permits, and, and many business licenses, and, of course, uh, um, uh, building uh, permits as well. Okay, any uh, questions? Thank you. And Mr. Doucette, is this the last time you're going to give us one of these? or I'm not sure. Whoops. Electric. He needs to be taught how to use that. <laughs> Too late now. <laughs> As far as the list goes, um, as far as the amenities, uh, we, we, we're just waiting for a lot of stuff to come in as far as the cigarette butt holders, uh, the doggy bags. Uh, as you can see, the banners are up, uh, our fire baskets, which is normal, are, are, are up. Uh, the planters will be done this week. With additional, uh, we have three new um, uh, self-watering planters going in as well. Uh, they're, they're, in, they're in stock, it's a matter of putting them out. Uh, one will be at, across the street. And then two more by the uh, diamond and also by the uh, pedicure, manicure, whatever cured over there. So uh, <laughs> do you mean do you mean the one by the diamond? Yes, yeah. two, there's two there in that, in that little block. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as far as asset ma asset management, uh, I guess on June second we're having a meeting, as it says here, to discuss the step. Uh, Terry will be in town, and I guess we'll see how this all works out. Uh, the water plant, uh, treatment plant, uh, as you know, uh, this has been expanded. Uh, at one time, it was supposed to be just well one and eight. It has been expanded to uh, wells four and five also. It is going to be in a, in a four-phase uh, um, 
it'll be done in probably in four phases, including going under the bridge and everything else. Uh, but that's the conceptual plan for that are all are all in place. And then again, hopefully funding will come into play to, to help us achieve that. Same thing with the sewer lift, where uh, the application have been have, have been made for for additional funding, and, and hopefully this will get started uh, sooner than later. As you know, this is a very important part of our of our of our, our system, and actually, it's the key part of our system. Um, Water twinning again, like Mary mentioned. I guess they're looking for funding for that, and then I guess this the some. I think that the uh, it's scheduled for 2016 to get uh, at least some of the phases started. Um, Main Street storm uh, had a nice little rain the other night. That was nice. Um, uh, not too many problems. Um, actually, the Main Street storm. We have to con contact the Ministry of Highways. Uh, I'm, Mary is is trying to ske schedule a. a um, a meeting with highways uh, and uh, look at the is it the policy barrier or whatever on the funding see what they can help us out with and basically this is looking at the issue that we have all the way from basically Eagle Court which is uh, McDonald's all the way to 85th over here which is home hardware so uh, it's it's a big it's a big project there's no doubt to, to sort of minimize uh, some of these problems uh, I don't know if you passed by the old Cactus building, um, the, uh, the area that the building has all been, uh, we had new windows, uh, some taken out and re-bricked, uh, we have new doors, uh, the whole thing has been painted, uh, the outside has been painted, uh, all painted. Uh, the inside, uh, you can't see it, obviously, it's, it's, we, we do have, uh, all, whatever we had in, in that little building is now inside, plus all our signs is in there also, it's been painted, new lighting. Uh, the lighting we got funding from Fortis for because we went to new stuff, so we got some money back for that. Uh, we're just waiting for paving of the parking lot, um, some little bit of landscaping, uh, and also uh, probably line marking and uh, um, handicap accessibility. So as far as that goes, that list that covers that part of it. Uh, all 2015 capital projects are underway and that Public Works is involved in. Uh, I don't have my, my list with me to let you know what's going on, but uh, it's, it's, everything is, is working out well. Uh, all the water upgrades, the meters have been ordered, uh, crack tuning is done for this year. We're, we're just going to sort of monitor a little bit with what's going on with that. We might have to do more next year. We are working at the well at Kinsman. That's going to be probably uh, uh, the, uh, the well drilling has been awarded, if I'm not mistaken. We'll get that done. That's, that will remove the irrigation at Kinsman from the town system to its own well system, similar to uh, what we have now from Lyons all the way to the bridge. That is not, not one drop is from the town office, or the town system. So other than that, things are going well. Um, I don't know if there's any questions or details or. Can I ask um, the storm the other night? <clears throat> um, I, a couple of emails. One was around Peanut Pond. Yes. So yeah. I knew that you'd, you had that. So uh, the other thing is the banner that was across Main Street is down. So was that, that, yes, that it, was a problem with that? Pardon me? Was that, there was a problem? Well, there's definitely a problem. It was half down, and I oh. got a call from our guy on call. He figures that he can, should I get somebody else to take it down? If not, we're going to probably lose it. So we did. We, I got a guy to come out. I think it was on Saturday or whatever. And then we took it down. It's at the shop now. Pat will be taking it to the, I guess, the marketing on Main people to have a look at it. Thank you very much. I guess it's, it, a, it's, a, it's a different type of material. Usually you see the big holes for the wind, and this one doesn't have it. It's supposed to be like a screen. Well, obviously that didn't work. Um, and that's unfortunate because that is, was yeah. brand new and it was just put up. That's so, right. yeah. Um, and so with the storm this weekend, um, I mean, that was pretty amazing pretty quickly. Is there uh, everything you no, said? Everything Peanut is Pond, good? It, it, yeah. the, the, what it did at Peanut Pond is it's an extra pipe that for, for excess. And then unfortunately, the riprap wasn't done sort of properly. So we'll fix that up with sure. the proper riprap. There's a few washouts here and there. Unfortunately, at the, at the, there was uh, quite the flood at the. Uh, at the, at the main uh, main washrooms, the new the, the oh. new area, uh, there was a little tiny little catch basin that got that got plugged by the new dirt. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the water almost got into the washrooms, but I don't think it did. Other than that, there's a couple of washouts here and there, but most of the work that's been done in the past all worked out really well. Good. Campo uh, Romita, like I say, the uh, Lake Shore, uh, Gala, everything seems to have, have, have worked well. 
Good, thank you. As, I as just, far as I have, we have all day today to call in, so I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, no, I did kind of a drive yeah, around on Sunday happens. to have a look. But um, the other thing was that I noticed this weekend that there were a lot of bikes in town, a lot of people riding bikes. So um, they're coming I, as well. That, that's part got, of the amenities as well. Yes, yeah. the the bike racks. We'll probably are put a couple at each at each block, including, like I said, the cigarette butts and doggy bag. Yeah. That's, that's coming up very shortly as Good. well. As soon as we get them, we'll, we'll, we'll put them up. Thank you very much. If I can just add, Absolutely. I think, Ron, one of the projects maybe you can provide an update on is the 74th Avenue reconstruction. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, on June 2nd, there will be a, uh, an open house at the Sonora. Uh, Terry and Todd and myself and Barry, probably some of the council, we will have an open house to just explain to the people what is going on, what, what's happening, uh, uh, what the improvements are going to they're, they're look at. So there will also be uh, uh, some letters going out to the, the actual people uh, directly involved. Or on the street, and also uh, it'll be on our website and everything else. So anybody that's interested on June second, I think it's from uh, five, no, six thirty to six to seven thirty. Six to seven thirty. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Where? Sonora. Sonora Center. I think it's room one, if I believe. Hey, Gerald, that's what he gave us. Yeah. There, CJ. <laughs> During the problem, also at the main park, it was skateboarders. Uh, you can you'll see already that there's some, some damages done already to our new. Mm -hmm. Park. Yeah, <laughs> but I guess the bylaw was there, kicked them out, and by the time they left, they were back. But hmm. that's what I hear. But anyway, like I say, I don't know if you've been down there. It looks. I, I didn't see it at night. That at night, I guess the trees are pretty amazing, and that those poles look some. I haven't seen it yet, so I, it says it's supposed to be pretty nice. So, but they are coming back this week to complete it. There is a. Uh, they're going to be putting mulch on top of the topsoil, which unfortunately they're about a, a couple of days late. <laughs> Uh, and and, and, a, uh, and a, a few little things here and there that they'll, they'll be cleaning up and, and, and fixing up. So until the next the next phase, which you guys want some bricks, we've got lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to be used for keeping. I hopefully apartment. they will. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's the, any other questions? Yes, Councillor Rhodes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the storm wreaked a little havoc on 74th over the weekend, and uh, thank you so much for doing that cleanup real early this morning. Uh, just all the mess just disappeared within about an hour or so. Yeah. Yeah, great job. I wanted to ask about the the water treatment uh, comments you had in here about the chlorination and mag manganese uh, yes. removal. Um, how come those are being paired together now? Is there an economic reason for doing that? I thought we were... Well, all, all of our, a lot of our wells do have the manganese. Like, you know, to, to, to deal with only one or two is, is really... You know, you, you should look at the whole problem, not just that. So that's why it, uh, wells four and five are our next ones that are basically the uh, the most susceptible to manganese, and that's why we're going to treat part the, the the building itself at at near the uh, sonar or the uh, cactus area uh, will 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 be also f designed for wells four and five at a future date. Mm -hmm. But okay. that involves a lot of piping, a lot of work. There's no doubt. So. Does that Anybody answer else? your question, or? Uh, well, kind of, sort of. I was just kind of wondering why they were being pa paired together and built together. I thought there were separate programs all together. Well, if Wells one and one and eight were were the start, and then what they're going to do now, rather than having a the building designed to only for two wells, it'll be designed for another two wells, four and five, which will be in the future will be connected to the same treatment plant to to help out with the manganese and like obviously chlorination if that ever comes. That's why I was asking. Uh, we still haven't had any uh, vigorous debate about chlorination yet. No, uh, you're so correct, yeah. And the manganese is a proven system, and I was just That's wondering right. why they were kind of grouped together and, and that kind of well, thing. So. Both, both are, are, are in the same building, so they will be both in the same building. That's why they're, they're together. Okay. It's like the, yeah. And can I just say that the Cactus Center looks really nice. <coughs> I, I, I was thinking that it needed a little sp sprucing up, and so now it's painted. A now little? I'm just <laughs> wondering if you need a little bright color on there somewhere. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Solves yeah. that problem, okay. Gold star. There's, 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 there's enough color on the, uh, uh, the, the splash board building yeah. there. No, I think. It yeah. looks good down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Uh. <laughs> Anybody else? No? All right. Um, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Council. Um, 
and, and just thank you for giving me an opportunity to do this presentation before our next person came at 10.30. Oh. <laughs> um, just following on with uh, uh, community services update in terms of council priorities, Desert Park facility. Staff has met on site with representatives from Desert Park Exhibition Society, a structural engineer and contractor. They wanted to move ahead and demolish the lower part of the grandstands, which they have already, and have it ready for the summer. They have identified two race dates in August, but have not been approved by gaming as of the date of this report. Their goal is to have the grandstands repaired and operational by that time. The contractor had specific instructions to meet with the town's building inspector once this work was started. We have not processed the $37,000 funding for phase one at this time, and there has been other potential funding for phase two, which was a roof and siding, uh, but that has not been confirmed yet. In terms of next priorities, Desert Park plan for programming and future site use. There has been some issues operationally with the green space at Desert Park. Specifically, the inside of the racetrack has always been difficult to manage. The major issues has to do with programming, irrigation and maintenance of the green space during the times the horses are still at the track, which has been the end of April. In order to alleviate some of these issues, we held a user meeting with members of the Desert Park Exhibition Society, the Pinnacles Football Club, soccer, our public work staff and our own community services staff. We tackled each issue and agreed on a compromise that will hopefully work better for future years. We will have earlier access to the fields for irrigation and maintenance. We will have access to the fields for the icebreaker tournament, the soccer tournament that's held, been held annually for the last two to three years. And we established better lines of communication so we can stay on top of new and emerging issues. In terms of uh, community services priorities, um, Recreation Commission restructure. We held our inaugural meeting for the Recreation Commission. Uh, Michelle Quayle was elected as chair and Mitch Fritz was elected as vice chair. Staff will be bringing a recommendation toward to council to identify some changes in the current bylaw. Some of those changes we would like to see would be a name change rather than a commission maybe to a committee, uh, a youth representative, uh, a position for an interior health representative, and also changing the day of the week from Monday to a Tuesday. This committee will also be responsible for the Age Friendly Program and the Healthy Living Coalition Group. Directing the Age Friendly Program through this body was passed by a formal resolution of council last year. In terms of the Age Friendly Plan specifically, uh, following the creation of the committee, there are five additional steps identified by the Age Friendly BC. The second step would be to pass a resolution indicating council support for the initiative, which was done. After that, the committee would create an age-friendly assessment which would include public input. The final steps are to develop and publish an action plan, implement the action plan, and monitor the age-friendly progress. We have completed uh, two of the five steps and the Recreation Commission will assist in completing the process. We will utilize the Community Services Master Plan which we completed last year as, as part of the program in order to get the public input section rather than killing, you know, or hopefully killing two birds with one stone. There have been a number of items that were identified by the public in open houses, online surveys, and telephone surveys, specifically with the SOU Senior Center. Uh, once the action plan has been identified, we will keep it updated and apply for funding as it becomes available. In terms of Desert Park Plan, we already updated that. Uh, program subsidy policy. Um, our program supervisor is preparing a CAL report for Council's consideration and we'll be bringing this forward hopefully June 1st. There will be a number of options available and assisting with the best option will help staff determine the best course of action to follow up on. In the past we have ha had at least five to seven families who have been directed to other subsidy programs or who have been assisted with their own programs. Having an opportunity to assist low income and people with disabilities in our community is obviously crucial. Uh, implement accessibility recommendations. This is part of our Spark um, accessibility audit that we completed and included in our budget are upgrades to the Splash Park, which will be for the parking and the sidewalk, and also to the marina to improve accessibility at both sites. Uh, staff has not completed any work on these projects to date. Expanded infrastructure in terms of programming. Uh, staff applied for a grant through Canada Post. Uh, to about $21,000 to help offset the cost of installing the climbing wall which was identified in our future years for 2016. Um, if we are successful we won't know until the end of the year and we could help use it to offset the cost for that project in 2016. 
Occupational Health and Safety Agreement. We actually brought this to council. It's completed, and we're just now waiting for signatures. Uh, our parks projects. Uh, staff has submitted a grant uh, to assist with a top playground, which is a playground for zero to five years of age, or say one day to five years of age. <laughs> um, this grant is in for about twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars, along with the money that we have dedicated already in our capital budget, uh, and it will be available this year if we are successful. And we haven't uh, completed anything on this because of that grant application. In terms of other activities, um, it was good to hear about the Osprey Nest this morning. Uh, we've had some issues with that. It is completed, but uh, I think we've worked them out. And uh, time will tell, especially after that big storm this weekend. And it didn't go down again, so which was wonderful. Uh, we have an electric car charger program. We wanted to continue with that um, at Gyro as another potential site for future planning. Uh, community services uh, grant program that was done and completed by myself, Councillor Campo, and Councillor King. And uh, we've been sitting down and talked to the uh, uh, coyotes, uh, and we will bring in a report towards Council uh, in the near future. Good. Thank you very much. Any questions on that? I had one way back. Yes. Have a comment. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible, Gerald, to put some mm -hmm. signs up about the electric car charging? Over the weekend, we had, I had a garage sale, so I had lots of people talking to me, and they said, how come we don't know these are electric car chargers? I said, I don't know. I, I, I think we are going to get some signage down at Gyro Park as part of that, and that could probably be included. Is that up correct? On, up on the highway, they're suggesting, okay. so when they come, so they know like it's when there. they were okay. coming, the electric car charger, because they went up to the Husky looking, thinking, the intersection and the information center was where they were going to get them. Okay. Just to mm. comment, because the they are being used. Good. All the uh, electric char car charges are GPS, uh, I think. So they are. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. And they are GPS. I would I would speculate that anybody who needs a charge is keeping up with all the technology and being able to find them. Uh, I think yeah, that I was one of the recommendations is. that uh, uh, when they were installed. Is that uh, you know, or what's part of the discussions that people will find them because because of the intricate system that they have. Uh, they, did, they did end up finding yeah. them obviously because yeah. that's why they were talking to me. But <laughs> they just said it would be easier, you know, when you're driving and to operate the GPS and you're in the middle of a ton of traffic and just uh, just a question. That's all. More signs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I I had a question about the climbing wall. Yep. Where, where is that an indoor one or an yes. outdoor? Okay, where would it go? In the if, gymnasium. Just yeah. on one of the walls there? Just on one of the walls. That's what we had talked about in, um, uh, in our budget discussions and it got moved to 2016. And I think uh, the cost that was brought forward was forty-five to 50000 um, And the grant through Canada Post is something that's an annual grant that we had applied for in the past. Got notification that another round was coming up, so we, uh, we put it to that. And it is for recreational type purposes, and it's um, it's it's not a matching grant, but it would fund up to 35 to 40 percent of the the actual project. So if we are, that might be a little bit of an incentive to actually uh, get it done. So, is it is it something that is going to take up a fair amount of room out from the wall, um, or is it attached to the wall? Or? Yeah. It, originally, what we had planned was to do it outside and um, on the wall facing the school grounds, on the outside brick wall there. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a little bit more uh, liability involved. Uh, and even if you have chain link fencing and had it barred off, uh, there's still some issues that we didn't feel comfortable with. Um, so we moved it to the gym. And um, after having a, a few discussions with staff, we, we sort of looked at it and what would be the most feasible would be on the, one of the far walls that go right to the ceiling in between two beams. So they're about probably 15 to 20 feet wide, and I think it was 40 to 45 feet high. Um, I had a discussion with our CAO, and we came up with a better plan uh, to bring it right to the basement, uh, utilized, uh, potentially utilize one section of our bleachers, uh, and bring it right to the roof there, creating it a little bit higher, uh, and still having ample room for bleacher, bleacher space for, for functions and all that, but not taking it away from other activities that would be going on in the gym. Because if we do it on the wall that's there now, it would be just dedicated for that, and you wouldn't be able to do much else. Mm -hmm. If it was somewhere where it wasn't on the gym floor, you can have it 
all the time, regardless of what's going on. And that that's sort of the option right now. So am I thinking it's on the on the west? The um, east side. The, the east, east side. side. And yeah. so does that make a difference? That's that's going down to the men's washroom. That is, correct. The, is that yeah. so that would have to be kind of redone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's what we're looking at. That's what we're investigating. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. Uh, well, we have all of our directors here. Uh, I'd just like to uh, pass on a, a comment. Uh, great job, every one of you. Um, so many positive comments from people that you know visit our town, and even some of the residents, about how everything is looking in our parks, uh, our bylaws, uh, you know, the financing that's set up with uh, being able to make monthly payments on your taxes is well received. Uh, everything that Gerald said at uh, Sonora Center. I don't think I missed anybody. Oh, Alan. Uh, I have to mention. Uh, some of the interaction that I have with developers and people getting building permits, uh, actually really enjoying going to that, that part of our uh, town right now. So great job, keep it up. Uh, you gotta search really, really hard to find negative comments about our community and every one of you are a big part of making that positive aspect uh, uh, so good in our community. So thanks very much. Absolutely, thank you, thank you uh, Councillor Rhodes for saying that, uh, absolutely. We feel very comfortable, I think, on council dealing with uh, with all of you. And uh, as I've said before, I think the town's lucky to have us all. <laughs> they are. <laughs> so thank you to all of you for, for all the work that you do and for the reports. Thanks, Empress. <laughs> <laughs> You're a devil. <laughs> okay, so. Um, we have we have somebody coming at 1030 they're not here yet so can we take a five minute recess is that the way that yeah. would work or a 10 minute till uh, mr. Topperzer comes do we need to have that a motion yes okay thank you uh, King Youngberg all, all in favor thank you that we have a quick oh here he is uh, <laughs> <there's> Richard. <laughs> so Hi Richard, how are you? <laughs> we were just going to, to take a five minute uh, and, and then we, because we thought, well, we'd wait for you. Is that all right? I'd like to, um, to reconvene uh, the the meeting, uh, Committee of the Whole meeting at 10.30 um, a.m. on uh, May the 19th. And I believe I need a motion to reconvene, is that correct? Okay, thank you, Councillor King, Councillor Youngberg, all in favor? Thank you, meeting is reconvened and we are very happy to have Richard Topperzer here from Regional Manager, Economic Development, Ministry of Jobs, Tourism and Skills Training. Sounds like a huge title. And Richard just drove down this morning from Vernon, said it was a very nice drive on the way down. So Richard, would you please tell us a little bit about um, about what you do and uh, how we can help or be um, know a little bit more about? I might flip that one on its own. <coughs> okay. But so all, what I wanted to do is, and thanks for having me, is I just wanted to introduce myself. And I think you've already done that uh, for me. So thank you. Um, and tell you a little bit about what it is that I do and then hear a little bit from you as to what's on your mind and, uh, and how I can actually help you. Good. So um, as, as you mentioned, so I am with the uh, Ministry of Jobs, Tourism, Skills Training. So that is the Senior Economic Ministry in the provincial government. We touch a whole host of things, many of the things that are captured actually in uh -huh. the name. Uh, but it is the Senior Economic Ministry. Uh, we also have labor as part of our responsibility. Uh, we work closely with international trade, uh, education, uh, health, you name it, everything to move the economy forward. And, and really I have a very simple mandate. And the mandate is to uh, go out and work with people in my region to generate revenue and create jobs. That's it. So that covers just about any sector that you could possibly imagine. Um, so I work with manufacturers, agriculture, <laughs> tourism, um, forestry, mining, you name it. Uh, I work with communities. 
So I have a lot of communities that I service, uh, basically from the uh, Beyond <coughs> Hope, so the Manning Park. Uh, right now, all the Kootenays, I manage all the Kootenays. Uh, we are going to be hiring somebody here in the next couple of weeks to take over the Kootenays. Uh, typically, I go out to the, uh, the Trail Rosland area, and then I go north to Summerland. We are going to do a little bit of boundary rejigging, but uh, I will maintain the South Okanagan and the boundary and the Similkameen. Probably look at uh, taking on a little bit more in the North Okanagan and a little less in the Kootenays. So um, I work with communities, uh, community leaders like yourselves, community uh, economic development. So Gail Scott and I work very close together, uh, Bonnie Dancy in the chamber, and I work very closely together on a number of projects. Uh, I work with all the other um, uh, uh, communities in the South Okanagan as well. I'll, I'll get to that in just half a second. I work with uh, organizations, so that could be Community Futures, that could be Hotelier Associations, um, as it might pertain in your community. Uh, the, uh, the Oliver Soyuz Winery Association is one example of uh, an association that I work with. Um, I work with uh, individual companies that are looking for foreign investment to sell their, to sell their uh, company because they want to retire, as an example. Uh, so, so really, the, the wide gamut, anyone and everyone. So um, that probably gives you a, a decent sense of what I do and how broad it is. Um, as so far as a Soyuz goes, uh, so Gail and I have been working on a number of things. Um, and Bonnie and I have been working on a number of things. And one, one of the things that uh, we've noticed in the past year is that the South Okanagan and the Similkameen have um, been eager to come together to do some things at a larger scale together. And so Gail and Bonnie both sit on, uh, on, that, um, on that team. And it's made out of, uh, so we've got uh, Summerland, Penticton, OK Falls, Oliver, Soyuz, uh, Karameas, and Princeton, all kind of collaborating together. <coughs> and out of that conversation of pop, three things that uh, I'm, I'm hoping are of interest to you because you've got some people there at the table uh, certainly advocating for your interests. So one is um, investment. So not only investment locally and investment in the community, but investment in the region. And so what we're doing is we're looking at, you know, where are some opportunities for investment in the region and the communities individually? Uh, how could we help build a prospectus? Um, I, I remember, uh, I think, Alan, were you at the land development workshop uh, that we held? No. Okay. I can't remember where I've seen you before. But I, I know I've seen you before. I, I think at one of our workshops. Was it? No. Okay. Um, anyway, we, we, we hosted a land development workshop not that long ago up in OK Falls, and I know it was actually scheduled during a council day, such as today, so I know Gail was able to make it. Uh, and really that was just to help communities uh, become development ready, uh, figure out where they um, might need to tweak a couple things to attract investment, and then to help them we sponsor, um, for no charge, uh, building prospectus, so developments Prospectus. So if there's properties in the community that you want to sell that the municipal, municipality owns or you want some investment in those properties, then that's exactly one of the things that we can help on. And we've taken that to a regional level as well because we feel that uh, we can actually, if we put together a conglomeration of investment opportunities in the South Okanagan, that will actually uh, attract a lot more investment interest. So. You know, if a soy use doesn't have what that particular investor is looking for, potentially Oliver does or, or Summerland or whatnot. So it's just kind of a large and greater pool, if you will. So, so some uh, investment, <coughs> community investment is one. The second is business development. Uh, so we're looking at uh, how can we help businesses. Um, one of the things we're going to be doing this fall is uh, what we'll call business success forums. And we're quite excited about it because it's, um, it's unique in the fact that it's about businesses learning from businesses. And I know the Chamber is putting on 12 at 12s to try and bring the businesses uh, together to understand what some common issues are. 
But this will actually be about finding the solutions and hearing from businesses uh, creative solutions to very common problems. So if that's uh, skilled labor, if that's affordable housing, you know, a couple things that might resonate in this community, then what are, what are some successful businesses doing and what can other businesses learn from them and how can we help them uh, get the same kind of success? So that's, uh, that's kind of another project that we're working on. Then the third one, which I know which will resonate, is tourism. And we had a neat uh, meeting last week where we had all of the destination marketers and tourism organizations that uh, service the South Okanagan coming together. What we're going to do in the next couple of weeks is we're also going to start including some of the uh, <coughs> larger winery associations and other uh, marketers that have resources. And we're going to look at what everyone does, and we're going to look at how we can complement. So if, if you could look at, uh, as an example, each community has wonderful events that they put on. Um, but as a region, those events could very quickly fill up a calendar. And we know that uh, oftentimes people come to a region, they don't necessarily just come to a community. And if they do stay in a community, they will go outside of that community and look at uh, some of the other regional offerings. So how can we as a region package that up? Uh, how can we uh, market that together more effectively so that um, we're not just trying to bring someone to an individual community, but we're bringing someone to a, to a whole region, as it were. So kind of three things that we're looking at currently at, uh, at moving forward in the South Okanagan. Um, yeah, so, and then, you know, some of the other pieces to that is uh, one of the things Gail and I have been talking about is, and I just think this is the most fabulous example of uh, something that needs to be shared provincially, uh, quite frankly, is the, um, the Okanagan College, uh, your town, and the school district coming together to put hospitality in the curriculum. Not only to keep, um, you know, that helps with the hoteliers and, and their, uh, their pool of, of labor, but it also keeps the youth in the community. It employs the youth in the community. It gets them into the community's greatest business, which is tourism. I mean, this is just a fabulous example um, of where folks are coming together, they're seeing a need, and they're filling that need that's actually filling a whole host of needs. And, and just so you know, I've taken that and I'm applying it now in the Boundary and in the Kootenays. Because, and, and, and we'll look to apply it in the rest of the province because it's just such a neat uh, way of putting all those pieces together and, and building that labor pool young and keeping the young people uh, where, where they want to be is, is at home, right? So that, that's, that's really uh, my, my speech, I guess. I didn't come with a formal presentation, but I am really curious to hear uh, <coughs> what's on council's mind uh, and where I can be of assistance. Can I just say first of all that thank you very much. Um, I didn't realize you did all those things. And, um, and I'm just wondering, are, I assume we're the only resort municipality that's in your, in your region because uh, we have a slightly different point of view when we... Yep. Yeah. Uh, I also work with Roslyn. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so they are there. another one. Yeah. They're a resort municipality? They are. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Didn't realize that. Okay, because that was one of those I forgot. Perfect. Questions, Councillor sure. Campbell. Thank, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> from my observations, and one of our biggest challenges or, or hurdles as far as our tourism growth and economic growth um, falls in recruitment and retention. Mm -hmm. So, you know, each year it seems to be getting tougher and tougher. And part of that is the expansion of, of the tourism industry here, from culinary to wineries uh, to hoteliers. Mm -hmm. um, with that becomes uh, a lack of training because of a, a lack of consistent employment. So employers are less likely to put more resources and uh, financial resources into training employees because it's, it's over a six month period and chances are they're, they're not going to um, uh, be able to keep those employees for, for several years. Mm -hmm. So I mean to me I've always looked at, at one of the gaps and, and Gail and I have had the conversation too. Um, about marketing uh, employment uh, right. rather than just tours, but marketing employment as well. Um, but the biggest hurdle there I think we have is 
both long-term and short-term affordable options for housing. Yeah. Um, whether we're talking about uh, bringing in year-round people um, to work within the industry or even the people that are coming seasonally uh, to look for rentals and affordable mm -hmm. rental housing is, is probably one of our biggest challenges. Yeah. Is that something that's part of the discussions that, that these groups are, are talking about or is it considered a priority? So I'm going <clears> to, <throat> and, and, I'm, and it's going to be a guess because uh, in June, the regional folks are come together. Uh, so we've got the Summerland, the Penticton, and the South Okanagan Chamber of Commerce, those three, Okanagan College and myself, and then uh, uh, Gail and a couple of the other economic development folks in the region. We're going to come together in June, and we're going to pick the top five um, issues for businesses in the South Okanagan. I'm going to guess that affordable housing is one of those. Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess that uh, attraction and retention of skilled labor is another. And that's the whole premise behind those forums, mm -hmm. is to then go out to the business community in the South Okanagan, not in, not in the community of the Soyuz or Oliver, but in the South Okanagan where we've got a bigger pool. and. Find, we know there are companies that are wrestling with this issue and that have dealt with it. I'll give you an example of a company in Penticton, Jet Power, that relocated from Edmonton. And they came in and they, brought, they, uh, they opened a new plant. They brought in 20 employees and they had no place to put them. And that company chose to buy a house to house their employees until two things. One, they could establish themselves in the community and two, their spouses could find employment in that community or, or surrounding region as well, right? So get, give them some place to land and get their feet on the ground. So that's an example of w what one company has done. What we need to do is we need to pull those companies together that have all done something unique and share that. So all communities. I'll, I'll tell you another story. I, I had uh, breakfast here uh, about a month or two ago. I won't say where, but I was in a restaurant and I could hear the waitress talking to a customer. Obviously, they knew each other. And she said, um, well, I don't know where we're going to go because the uh, Mexican workers are coming back next month and we're going to be out of a house. So we're thinking about moving up to Oliver. And then maybe in the fall we can come back. I don't know. So it seems like there's, there's you know, it was just one example of uh, hearing people in the community talk about that true housing need. Right. And so Gail and I have been talking about it. We've been talking about it with, um, you know, the seniors' residents. Uh, you know, we had talked about, um, like, with Spirit Ridge, uh, potentially offering to put uh, some some low-cost housing to house some staff on the reserve. Um, I've put her in touch with uh, the, the regional manager of BC Housing uh, out of Penticton, so she could start embarking on a conversation there. So. I mean, there's no silver bullets in any of these. It's one conversation at a time. But yeah, I, I'd like to think that there's numerous conversations occurring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councillor Rhodes. Um, thank you, uh, Richard. Uh, well, let's quit the portfolio your ministry yeah. has. <laughs> <laughs> covers an awful lot. Yeah. Practically everything in life is covered <laughs> under your ministry. <laughs> well, you know, good portion, <laughs> yeah. yeah no. I want to ask uh, uh, a question that I'm hoping you can answer. It's kind of a political question, and maybe you have a personal opinion about it. It's about our minimum wage level in British Columbia. And I know there was a, a bump uh, recently, and uh, really the statistics are very grim when it comes to that. Uh, that bump did little or nothing to help people out. Uh, uh, it's anybody that's making a wage like that is certainly way below the poverty line, and I'm sure you're familiar with all of the the statistics and how that affected uh, people's lives. Is there anything that your department is doing to bring that up to a more realistic level where people at least have a chance, you know, at working at, you know, a large percentage of our workforce is definitely in that category in our community. Is there anything that you're doing or whether the government is doing to, you know, relook or bring that up again for a discussion? Because you know, really, it was it was nothing. It was ineffective. Uh, it was just a very small bump, and we need to get those wages up to a livable level 
before you can tackle affordable housing or even putting bread and butter on people's tables, you know. Right. You know, there's so there's nothing that I'm personally doing. Uh, I, I will I will say before I answer your question that uh, I'm I, I can also be used as a conduit into government. Obviously, uh, the province is uh, the, the government bureaucracy is quite massive, and uh, so I can be used as that conduit in. Uh, so I get questions like this quite often that I can't answer. Uh, the political side. I, I, I really don't have any business answering. That's, I think, a, a conversation with uh, perhaps your local MLA, Linda Larson, or um, you know the folks in Victoria. Uh, but what, what I do know is that uh, it, it appears to be a conversation that continues. Whether, because uh, you, know, you hear about it in the news peri periodically, and you hear that conversation continuing to unfold. So uh, that tells me that there are folks in Victoria that are crunching numbers, looking at what's the impact of, uh, of this, that, and the next thing to doing such a thing, uh, versus what's the impact to actually a household, as you say, small increment versus large increment. So I, I, I'm not, uh, I don't have any specific detail. Um, what I can do, is I could probably uh, find somebody in Victoria for, 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 to follow up with you on that if that's of interest to you. That might know a little bit more about the file. So many of the things that you've mentioned that you do are affected by the, you know, our residents' inability to be able to afford affordable housing, as right. ridiculous as that sounds. Yeah. So yeah, if there's uh, somebody you can contact. And I ask you, because you're here and Linda Larson absolutely. is not, so. No, absolutely. And yeah. And uh, so perhaps I'll just get your business card uh, before sure. I depart and then I'll, I'll follow up with you. Okay. Councilor Youngberg. Yes, thanks, uh, Mayor McCordoff. Uh, good to see you again, Richard, you. and nice uh, that you've taken some time to be here. We appreciate that. Um, can you just explain a bit to us about the PNP program <laughs> because I think it's quite um, workable in our area and there are a couple of files open. Yeah. Can you give us any updates on where we're at with that? Um, you probably no more than what you heard in uh, Vancouver a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. The uh, we I hear um, for the, for a time there. Can I just I, ask for the for the viewing public what PMP is? PNP, yeah. Yeah, the provincial nominee program. So the for uh, immigrants. Yeah, so what yeah. we do is, uh, as a province, we have uh, about 5,000, give or take, spots that we can nominate immigrants in two uh, trains. One is the skilled labor and the other is the entrepreneurial train. So if an immigrant wants to come and buy a business, then uh, we, they, go, they apply, they go through process, and then we can nominate them as one of our 5,500 spots, so it fast tracks their immigration, as an example. So uh, there, there wasn't a week that went by that I didn't hear from a community about that provincial nominee program and the frustration around how much time it took. Uh, what I do know is that the, uh, and I know that puts a lot of business owners in, in a tight spot, you know, because they uh, might have a deal pending with an immigrant that has to go through 18 months of process and then uh, maybe that deal will fall through and the business owner wanted to retire 16 months ago kind of thing. So uh, as well as, you know, if you're looking for a, a baker that has a skill that can't be found in too many places, uh, how do you make that bread without that baker if you can't get them to come and live here, right? So I, I hear it a lot uh, from communities. Uh, I can tell you that the province has heard it a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, they are revamping the program. They are looking at a priority uh, prioritization type queue. Um, they are looking at a streamline, a significant streamline, and they are looking at hiring uh, about 30 or 40 new staff as we speak and training them up. So there has been a pause in the program. I know our minister has come out to say that uh, we are pausing the program so that we can deal with the backlog. We will open again in a couple of months to a much more efficient, uh, much higher staffed program. Mm -hmm. um, they're still working out, in fact, the, uh, the provincial nominee uh, senior staff were here in the Okanagan last week um, meeting with some communities 
and businesses in communities. I know they were in Kelowna, Vernon, and uh, or sorry, Penticton, uh, Kelowna, and Kamloops, meeting with the business community to say, how can we help you? What are some things we need to think about when we reopen this program mm -hmm. that will assist you in your needs? So um, that consultation is taking place and has been for some time, but uh, until it opens, I, I won't, you know, mm -hmm. we won't know. But hopefully, I'll, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to just sort of encourage them to get on with it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It just, it just takes uh, so long for the process, and the I owners agree. of the businesses here are just, you know, having a difficult time dealing with it and Somewhere think that there. it's our, you know, that it's some of our processes that are causing the, the hold up when, in fact, it really isn't. Yeah. But anyways, and then just to continue on, just yeah. to clarify, um, I, I sort of thought I heard and our congratulations to Gail regarding that skills training program because mm -hmm. I think she spearheaded that, didn't she? I, I, I know she was, I don't know if she spearheaded, but I know she was heavily involved. Yeah, well, it was really something that I thought was great because they, um, having been involved with high school and still am in the grade 11 and 12 areas, they really, really need some help so they can stay here yeah. and work within the industry. And they really don't have a clue when they apply to any of the hospitality businesses to even know how to hold a cup or say yeah. hello. Or, you know, so it's a great, great opportunity, I think, to keep the youth in our community. Yeah. So whatever you can do there is really appreciated. Yeah. Well, and I think it's also, it speaks to, to Gail uh, and kind of making the match of, you know, here's a need in the business community mm -hmm. and here's a need in the community as a whole to maintain its youth. Uh, so to making that match, but also I would say um, the, uh, the forward thinking of both the college and the school district. Right. And uh, frankly, um, <coughs> I'm being totally honest when I say this, not all school districts are that forward thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's amazing and, and I know that I've because I've worked with the school district on a couple of things another one was uh, you know Aboriginal training mm -hmm. and they, they are really out uh, ahead mm -hmm. well um, their culinary program just graduated yeah yeah, they had, yeah. yeah they're, they're great examples of, of mm -hmm. how they're really trying to meet the needs of the community mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the people that's great, great to see it is yeah. thanks for your time well, thank you very much, Richard, for coming and explaining your job me. to us. We're still kind of overwhelmed, I think, about the number of issues that you have to deal with. But, uh, but we certainly know who to contact if we if we have any more questions. Yeah. So thank you very much, and um, I think we will. Nobody has any other questions. We will uh, call a the um, adjournment of this of this meeting. Thank you, Councillor Campbell, Councillor King. All in favor. Thank you, um, and thank you, Richard. Thank you. Um, before we start the in camera. Uh